Do you think the Funai VCRs were a pile of junk and hard to work on? Check out this JVC HRS3800. Yes, the loading belt is easy to change, but that's about the only thing. Try cleaning the mode switch on one of these bad boys. Complaint on this one was you load a tape and it kicks the tape out, so let's check it out. That one kind of sounds like a bad belt to me. You can hear the loading motor running. As a reminder, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button as it really helps the channel out. There's also an AV CompuLink that allows your entire JVC audio-visual system to turn on simply by putting a tape into the VCR. This is going to be an easy one. It's just a loading belt. It's laboring, it's slipping here. Give it a bit of a helping hand and away it goes. So... This could be a real easy repair. This one was actually sent up a long ways to be repaired, but I got a couple of them from them. So this is the one. I got an EVS 3000 as well. This one just needs a loading belt. That's all this one's going to need, that belt there. And that's how easy it is to replace, just like that. I'm going to go find a little smaller one than this belt. So here's the original. I'll try a couple of other ones here and see which one is a little bit smaller. That one there is certainly a little bit smaller. That's a lot smaller. This one here looks to be a little bit bigger. I might try this one. It looks like someone tried to glue this belt back together. Come on, camera, focus. Come on, focus. You can do it. Look at the belt. It looks like someone glued that together. So there's a looks like it's been glued with crazy glue. That was what came out of this one. So I got one here. Say a little bit, a little bit smaller, and it should give us a little more torque. And that's what we're going to need. A little bit more torque. So we'll put it around. My, dental pick here throw some extra light on the spot Just like that. Okay, let's try this one out now. See whether it works. Well, it will. Guaranteed it's going to work. Of course, we'll put it through all the modes. I'll probably pull this apart and clean the mode switch on it as well. But uh, for starters, the, the uh, loading belt had to be changed. And there it is playing. And fun. Watching TV can be romantic. You know, that special someone, a great movie, low light, very low light. They've provided a feature you'll really appreciate. An illuminated remote control. Just another means to suck the batteries down on the remote, right? The illuminated remote. Okay, so that, that's done. That part's done. Um, before completing this though, I, I really do want to clean the mode switch on this unit because if it hasn't been done, it's going to need it.
that I don't know on this is whether it's attached to the board on the bottom or whether it'll lift out. It's been a while since I've opened up one of these units. I think this one's attached to the board. I actually have to operate the mechanism down by releasing the latches here and just turning the mechanism down because there's screws that go down into the, the chassis below. You have to remove the or remove the front loader out of the way or remove it to access these two screws. And then the chassis should lift out, I think. I think that's all that holds this one in. Okay, with those screws out, the entire chassis should be lift, should be able to be lifted out. I think all the screws are out on the board here, making sure I didn't miss any. But it should be able to lift everything out. The circuit board, chassis, all comes out as one piece. Just like that. Now we can turn it over to release the chassis from the circuit board, which is probably held in place by clips or screws. Yeah, there's clips here to access the mode switch wherever it's hiding on this one. I tell you, Funai decks are looking pretty good compared to this JVC piece of junk. So in order to get the back panel off, I spent like 10 minutes taking this off. You have to take out two screws, but you also have to release these clips on both sides of the S-Video jack, both sides and the top side of the AV inputs. Then you can remove this panel. You have to remove that panel in order to be able to unplug the connector at the back of the video head drum so that you can remove the chassis otherwise you'll never get this plug undone so now that we've unplugged the head drum i can now proceed to remove the board what a stupid design this unit has turned out to be and you got to do this if you want to clean the uh, mode switch or if you want to change the the main belt you got to pull this all apart to get at it. It's um, definitely not a user or a service friendly machine by any stretch. And then we can re squeeze these clips again. Now I can lift the board off. To access the belt and the mode switch right there. Make sure I get the mode switch back exactly where I took it out. I've put a little mark on it here because I don't know where the timing marks are. The mechanism is not in the fully unloaded position right now, but there is a little protrusion right there on the black plastic. So I put a little mark right there so they know exactly what position that switch is in when I remove it. And there's the mode switch. You can see where I marked it, right there. Because that's what position the mechanism is stopped in as I removed it. To open up the mode switch to clean it, just to squeeze the little, the little clips inside here and it should pop apart. And then we can get in there and uh, clean it properly. Yeah, it, it uh, definitely needs to be clean. Look at how grimy that is. So we're going to clean that up with some contact cleaner. So I'm going to use Neutral on this one to clean it up. You'll see how shiny these contacts will get 
once I clean all the crap off them. Now Neutral has got a lubricant built in. And this is the old version. This is not the new formulation that they sell today. This is formulation from the 1980s when they actually were able to use Freon TF as the cleaning solvent. Neutral was developed by the telephone industry back in the day of crossbar switches and Stroger switches to clean and keep the contacts clean over a period of time. The closest cleaner I think you can get today as far as how good this one was is probably Deoxid. But this, this cleaner works really well. It's one of the best ones I've used. So I'll put the switch back together. We'll get a little bit more cleaner in here just to leave a residue behind. I know some will say put grease in it, but the residue that's left behind from Neutral it, uh, is every bit as good as putting grease in there. It's a, a good lubricant to keep the contacts clean. Now I had this mark right there with that little, a little pin on the side index pin and this gear is actually keyed anyway so it's only going to go in one way or it won't won't fit properly but now time to reinstall there we go put the screw back through Okay, mode switch is in place. Time to reattach the circuit board and start putting this unit back together. As you can see, this is a really, a really cheap looking mechanism. It's a JVC, but uh, this was the last of the JVC machines. It was right before they stopped production. And they could have done a lot better than this, but that belt still got lots of tension, so nothing to worry about there get the cables through where they're supposed to go and drop the circuit board back in place once everything's lined up the s video switch over here the uh, led for the tape sensor and the end sensors the board will drop back in place quite easily and lock back in on the little locking tabs on the circuit board there that holds it in place now next I know it looks like I'm manhandling the board but I'm actually not I'm actually very carefully maneuvering this around next we can plug in the drum motor again at the back and the rotary transformer carefully reinstall that ease it down into the connector to make sure it's fully seated. There we go. Okay, now this ridiculous back panel can go back on. And that should go on a lot easier than it came apart. After all, it was put together by robots. Just line it up and snap it together. Just like that, and then 
the same over on the S video plugs on the other side. They just clip in place. There's a couple of screws that secure them. I say it's a lot of work to do on one of these just to clean a mode switch or change a belt if that's necessary. There are much easier machines to work on than this thing, that's for sure. Okay. Rip the cables back in where they were and behind here. Where was this one? One of them went in behind like this. As I say, it was, it's, it's really a um, kind of a ridiculous chassis that went through here and then plugged in. Okay, I think I can drop this back into the main the main cabinet now and try it out. And it drops in, there's a, a metal clip that goes in here. Kind of fits in here. hold down the tape reel that goes in there and then a screw goes in behind it another screw over on this side and two more screws in the back power cord. Don't worry, it's not plugged in. And then the front face plate with the buttons on it goes back on. Plug goes in. Actually, I should be able to power the unit up and it should complete the eject cycle. Then I can put the front panel back on. So we'll plug that in. Power the unit up. And it should reset itself. Should go back into reset now, like that. Then I can slide the front cover on. Put on this cover. And the unit should be ready to uh, test and final assembly. This is a display that has a wide range of uses in the home, in the office, or in the classroom. Wherever and whenever. Yeah, that's working. Let's uh, check uh, or reverse search. Play. What's the JVC 95 series? Forward search. Stop. Full rewind should kick into high it might not because of the oddball reel size here it may not go faster than that because this has got really small reels oh yeah it's going to okay there it goes I had to figure out how much tape was on here and how fast it's going to let it go because this is a, a short tape fast forward I'll put a regular tape in here in a moment okay so that's working we'll eject it I'm going to put a Super VHS tape in here momentarily. Okay, so that's a regular tape. Let's grab a Super VHS tape. Super VHS tape. I'll have to turn the sound down on this one because it's got uh, copyright music on it. I can't let play.
in-camera effects. Didn't you just love those? That was a Panasonic PVS 350. Get rid of these plugs hanging in the picture. Oh well. Anyway, um, Vancouver Aquarium. This would have been shot back in the 19. I'm going to say late 80s. I will have to look and see what's on here. But this was a this was a dub, obviously because it's got hi-fi sound. So the uh, recording was made on a SVHS tape, and then it was uh, dubbed over. And uh, this is one of a few times I went to the aquarium with cameras and filmed them. Because I didn't have an aquarium of my own back then, right? So I figured I'd just go take pictures of a nice one. In camera dissolve. Gotta love how they thought that consumers would just love those effects where the picture just abruptly stops and then you get like a five second dissolve. At least Sony with their um, CCDV 5000 did it with a little bit more finesse. It did dissolve much faster. It still froze, but um, it didn't um, freeze for like three seconds before it dissolved, which was kind of ridiculous. Anyway, um, forward search. Freeze. Reverse search. Going to full fast forward. Full reverse or rewind. Knows it's near the beginning of the tape. If I were to go further out in the tape, it'll go much faster than that. So we'll just we'll just fast forward a bit here. This is a T60 or an ST60 tape, but it's got the larger reels. <clears throat> there it's working properly, as you can see. And then when it gets close to the beginning of the tape, it will slow down. That's all done so that the machine has enough time to stop before the leader runs out. So as it's getting closer to the beginning, as you'll notice, the tape speed is starting to reduce. I believe I have one of these machines, or one very close to this one. I bought one a couple of years ago at the Value Village. I was walking through there and... They had a JVC Super VHS ET. It's similar to this, if it's not the same model. It might be the same model. $15. I didn't need a Super VHS machine. I already had a number of them. But for 15 bucks, I couldn't walk away from it. And I've got it set up. It's set up in my, in my uh, equipment closet so that if I want to play a VHS tape or a Super VHS tape, I can. I think I've used it. I might have used it two or three times since I got it. I have another one that I use for uh, transferring tapes. I got a couple of others that I actually use for uh, for tape transfers. Anyway, this one's fixed. So now you know how to change the belt, but more importantly, now you, now you know how to take this piece of crap apart to get in and clean the mode switch because mode switch cleaning on machines of this vintage is a must. If you don't, it might work fine today and tomorrow it'll chew up your prized tape. They gotta be done if they've been sitting around. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.